Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we're going to be taking a look at a different flavor of Linux distribution for the Raspberry Pi called Kali Linux. So let's get started. So guys, for those of you who don't know what Kali Linux is, it's basically a distribution for a different type of hacking. Instead of using GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi, it actually is for network security and penetration testers. Now this operating system contains all the tools that most pen testers would use to break into a network or to beef up a network or anything alike. To get started, we're going to need a 16 gigabyte or more SD card to fit all the tools and the operating system in. Uh, also, we're going to be downloading an uh, operating system called Metasploitable 2 that has a full list of vulnerabilities for us to break into. Metasploitable 2 is very interesting if you ever decide to take a look into an operating system. It's an extremely vulnerable operating system made by Rapid7 for lab environments like this where we could test our hacks or figure ways to beef up security. So if you guys are interested in the setup that I made, uh, I'll leave a link in the description below on where I got the screen and the keyboard and some of the other stuff that I might have used during the time when I used Kali Linux on Raspberry Pi. Alright guys, to start off, we are going to need to download the distribution for the Raspberry Pi. So we navigate over to Kali.org, hit download, and shoot down to Kali ARM images. Now from here, you could actually select your board. So if you don't have a Raspberry Pi 2 and you have any of these other boards like the Hubie board or, um, I don't know, Banana Pi or something like that, it actually is available on this site. I'm going to actually scroll down to Raspberry Pi and download the Raspberry Pi 2 slash 3 image. Now I've already done this, so I'm actually going to skip over to a part where I load the image into the SD card. Like how we always do all other images that we load, we first load up Win32 Disk Imager find our SD card path storage and I already loaded this up and all you have to do is hit write once this gets completed then we can load it into our Raspberry Pi 2 and then we can finish off from there All right, guys, now that we loaded all the files into our SD card, now we can plug it into our Raspberry Pi. Now, for my instance, just for recording purposes, I'm using the VNC viewer. Now, the first time you log in, it's actually going to be username root and the password T-O-O-R, which is root spelled backwards. Now, most importantly, we are going to need to change that. So, it's going to be password or P-A-S-S-W-D and then change it to something you will remember. All right, if you take a look at the space, you're going to see that it's 3.4 gigs available and total size is 6.7. Meanwhile, I have a 16 gigabyte uh, SD card in there. So the first thing we need to do is get app get install gparted. It's a utility that allows you to resize your partition. We're going to use gparted. and basically load up our partition. Here, click on the first partition, resize and move, and we're gonna use the slider and slide it all the way to the end. Resize, apply, apply for the pending operations, completed operations, close, and then you can close this out. Now that it's done, you're gonna notice now it's available, 11 gigs and size is 15. We're going to need this because if you want to download the full set of tools, it's going to take another 4 gigs. If you take a look at the applications, there's not much tools here. There are some, but not much. So to get the full list of tools, what you want to do is app get install Kali Linux full. Now it's gonna actually install every single tool that we would be using in our arsenal. Now it's gonna need to download 1.2 gigs of stuff and after the operation with the installation and everything, it's gonna take another 3.4 gigs. So hit yes and just let that go. It is actually gonna take a very, very long time. And what I mean is like upwards of four, maybe five hours, depending on internet connection also. It's gonna take a while, so sit back and relax or let this go. 
So while we're waiting for Kali Linux to install the tools and everything, we might as well just download Metasploit 2 and get that working. It's actually made by Rapid7 and Offensive Security has like a guide on how to install everything. There's so many ways it actually comes in a VMware image where you could actually download this program called VMware Player for free and then you could run it right off that or if you got virtual machine you could run it right off that. For my instance I actually run Proxmox server. If you saw my earlier video on how to install this server you could actually get it up and going on your Proxmox uh, virtual server environment. And here I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can download it and all the information for everything else. You could just click on this link download the zip file and as soon as you extract it it's actually going to be in a again a VMware file format once you load it into Metasploitable 2 you're not going to get much you're only going to get a console that's basically about it and from here on once you get your Kali set up you could use it as a you could use Kali to attack this victim's computer all right now that everything's done downloading we head over to applications and you're going to notice a lot more tools information gathering you see the drop downs it's enormous so it's a lot more tools you can hack with your bluetooth you could hack with your wi-fi everything it's it's already pre-updated and it's the full-blown tool set and keeping the xfce desktop environment all right so now that everything's installed you're going to notice when you hit on the applications there's going to be a lot more tools than what you saw before it's a lot more tools that we would definitely be using, especially like the Bluetooth hacks and the Wi-Fi hacks, stuff like that. You're going to have to be exploring on your own. Now, I told you earlier to get made exploitable too. The reason behind that is because it's a vulnerable system. Again, it is basically our victim. And we could basic, we basically just set up our lab environment where we could test and play around with our Kali. So the first step is always to scan the victim. That would be required mmap dash sv 192.168.105.105 All right, now that it's done, let's take a quick look. You're going to notice that there is a lot of ports open. I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, so you you could take a look. You can see clearly that our victim is very exposed and very vulnerable because all these ports are open. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you haven't watched my previous video on how to back up your Raspberry Pi images, I would highly recommend watching that and doing this on the Kali Linux because it took four hours to app get everything and I don't want that time to go wasted if you're planning to reuse this operating system. Now, if you are more interested in penetration testing, hacking, or security and stuff like that, I would look into both Kali Linux and Metasploitable 2. Now, Metasploitable 2 is basically a double-edged sword. You could actually do both things. You could find Kali Linux, find the vulnerabilities, and hack into Metasploitable 2. Or you could actually learn how to log into Metasploitable 2 and put up all the IP tables and prevent all the hacks and stuff like that. So you get actually the learning experience of both. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you liked this video, please hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, hit that little subscribe button. That helps me a lot. Also gives you notification on when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.